Uh, hello, everyone. This is Zhang Yi from Tsinghua University, and uh, I'm honored to give a second speech in this session. And uh, actually, this is a work uh, supervised by my PhD advisor, Yang Zheng, from Tsinghua University. And this is also a joint work between Tsinghua University, UCSD, and uh, the University of Hong Kong. So uh, while you are watching my slides, have you considered that vision is one of the most important sense for human? It is reported that almost 83% of the information perceived by human brain is collected by eyes. And uh, just like human brains, uh, computers nowadays also perceive the world with vision systems. The cameras have similar structures as human eyes and render images at, at pixel level. Natural neuro, uh, neural networks are designed to imitate how human brain process information. And some recognition tasks can be achieved by CV technologies, including classification, object detection, and instance segmentation. <coughs> Sorry. Despite being effective, CV technologies still has several limitations. It cannot deal with occlusions, and its performance will even get bad when the lighting condition changes. So due to privacy leakage issue, cameras are not applicable in some sensitive scenarios. So we wish for a privacy-preserving sensing technology that can see through walls and uh, see through occlusions. So looking at the bigger picture, wireless signal and the vision signals have a lot in common. They are both electromagnetic waves, and they all perceive the target by capturing the signal reflections and their information are featured by multiple frequencies, such as the subcarrier or color channel. However, wireless signals are available in non-line-of-sight condition and has less privacy issues. Uh, now that vision systems are making their way to our lives, we are wondering if wireless sensing can also be a pervasive sensing technology. Most of the prior wireless sensing works perform conventional signal processing in tandem with deep neural networks, which are mainly designed for images and videos. And the RF data, however, is non-visual, complex-valued, and also high-dimensional. It fundamentally differs from visual data. So there exists a gap between existing neural network and the RF data. And we're asking this question, how to design a specific deep neural network for wireless signals? And our, uh, our inspiration comes from a simple observation. We generate two chirp signals, as you can see from the leftmost uh, figure. One of them has a frequency changing from 1 hertz to 20 hertz, and the other changes from 5 hertz to 24 hertz. And a linear curve will be observed in the spectrogram if we apply time frequency analysis. But when we add up the two signals, the actual spectrogram, spectrogram is far from expected. As you can see from the right figure, two frequency components are interfering with each other, creating confusions. And on top of that, we try to increase the frequency difference between the two signals. The results reveal that interference only exists for small frequency differences. And we may argue that in most of the cases, the frequency components may not be that close to each other. And how, but however, the Blur in the spectrogram will inevitably cause difficulties in learning-based recognition tasks. The above observation potentially point us to the problem regarding spectral resolutions. And actually, this is all about Fourier transform. Fourier transform is an algorithm that can separate individual frequency components in the signals. As a straightforward example, a sinusoid signal makes a single peak in the frequency domain. And it should be noticed that the time domain signal should have an infinite length according to the Fourier theory. But, but in practice, we have to crop the signal before doing Fourier transform because the computers only have limited computing resources. The actual spectrogram would be like a peak with some leakages. So this is, called, this is usually called the spectral leakage phenomenon. And the window fu function has been proposed to mitigate this so-called spectral leakage effect. Among them, the Hamming window has narrow main lobe, but the side lobes are still strong. And the Gaussian window has very low side lobes, but its main lobe is wide. And the Hamming window has narrow main lobe, and its side lobes are decreasing very fast. All the window functions, to some extent, 
remains vulnerable to the interference. And uh, so the interference caused by spectral leakage is unstable. This problem is, is, is very important because, uh, as you can see from the figure, uh, we crop a window at a different time delays, and the spectrogram of the two sinusoid signals sometimes demonstrate a single peak, and sometimes they demonstrate uh, two separate, separate peak, peaks in the spectrogram, which means that the initial phase really matter in the spectro, so, uh, spectrogram re uh, <coughs> sorry, reconstruction. So how can we restore the ideal spectrum from the unpredictable interference? And in this work, we resolve to neural networks. The learning-based method offloads the computation in the, to the training phase and enables efficient regression in the testing phase. The proposed spectrogram enhancement net network, which is abbreviated as SEN, takes as input the measurement uh, and uh, output the re re recovered spectrum. Collecting training data for real from real scenario is challenging and we instead generate the training data manually. And specifically, we randomly generate ideal spectrum with one to five frequency components and convert them to the spectrum with leakages. The leaked and the ideal spectrum are used as uh, the input and output of the network for training. And after training finishes, we do some evaluations. The left two figures show the one-dimensional spectrum before and after enhancement. And you can see from the figure that the two components can be reconstructed, and they are very clear in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the figures uh, after the enhancement. And in the red figure, we also perform a two-dimensional evaluation. And it, it demonstrated that the frequency components are very clear, clearly recovered by our net, uh, network. Uh, and another challenge is about convolution, uh, the convolutional neural network, which is also known as CNN. CNN has not, uh, has not, uh, was not uh, originally designed for wireless signals. It is widely used for wireless sensing. Uh, and the, the key component in CNN is the convolutional layer, in which uh, each neural neurons only takes a local field of the input. And all the neurons in each layer share the same ways to ensure that the local features are preserved, re, uh, preserved irrespective of their lo uh, global locations. As this may cause trouble for wireless signals. As CNN, CNN only focuses on local dependencies, it is invariant to image shifts. And, but however, the global locations of the frequency components are not allowed to be shifted. So taking the FMCW signal, for example, when we shift the uh, spectrogram along the two dimensions, it will correspond to uh, totally different physical meanings. Uh, so it is necessary to develop a new model that simultaneously preserves local dependencies and global discriminations. To achieve this goal, we propose to modulate the spectrum grams with linear fees. Uh, it is expected that the, the adjacent frequency components have similar fees, while the distant ones have discriminative phases. So we modulate the spectrogram with phases that vary linearly along the frequency domain, which is shown in this uh, formulation. And the frequency components modulated with phases can be viewed as polarized in a two-dimensional complex plane. And the spatial discrepancy is introduced. To process the complex value spectrogram, we also design a complex value, uh, complex value neurons and uh, convolutional operations the real value of the canals are convolved with the real and the imaginary parts of the spectral grounds. They are separated and, uh, uh, and combined with the belts to get the final complex value uh, valued output. The max pooling layer downsamples the features with the maximum amplitude and outputs the complex valued features. So using the above modules, we design a spectrogram processing neural network, as is shown in the figure, uh, the red, red part of this uh, network is called SEN. It takes as input, uh, as, uh, it has, it takes as input a spectral gram transformed from wireless signals, and it removes the spectral leakage in the spectral gram. And it, it, it recovers the underlying actual frequency components. And in the middle, the fusion mod module combines SEN enhanced spectral grams with various temporal and frequency resolutions 
to form a hologram of spectrograms. And in the last, the, the PCN, which was introduced in the previous slides, uh, it modulates them with linear physics and uh, extracts features with the designed convolutional neural network. And at last, a task adaptive network is applied for different tasks, like activity classification or signal regression. Unlike, convention, unlike a conventional CN network, each part of this network are tailored for RF signals. And we evaluated the, our proposed network in four Wi-Fi sensing applications, including gesture recognition, gate recognition, fault detection, and breath estimation. And uh, <clears throat> among them, device-free gesture recognition is one of the core enablers for human-computer interaction. In this experiment, uh, one Wi-Fi transmitter and six receivers are placed in a classroom to capture the motion of human arms. The users are asked to stand at five different locations inside the room and perform six predefined gestures. Gate is, a, is a working, the working pattern of human and has been exploited for human identifications. In this experiment, uh, each volunteer walked freely across the center of the room with eight directions. The two data sets actually come from our previously published papers. And the uh, fault detection is an another important uh, application. It is, it is, uh, fault is, major, is a major cause of injuries among senior citizens. And some works have already tried to detect faults with Wi-Fi signals. For, uh, so in this experiment, we replaced a pair of Wi-Fi device in an apartment Five volunteers were asked to fall freely onto the ground with protections. This data set is also comes from our, one of our previously published work. And for breath estimation, uh, it is an important, uh, breath is an important vital sign that can indicate the condition of physical health. In this experiment, we set up a pair of Wi-Fi devices in an office and let two volunteers sit in the chair and breathe naturally we try to estimate their breath rate at the same time. Uh, even though our system is designed for motion recogni recognition tasks, its components are beyond that scope. For example, the signal enhancement module can be used for spectral leakage in reduction, which could potentially boost the performance regarding spectral analysis. And the below two figures show an example of the spectrograms when a person performs a push and pull gesture. Uh, with traditional spectral analysis, we can barely see the frequency components to differentiate the uh, dif different gesture stages. However, after the enhancement network, we can, uh, after the enhancement, uh, the spectrograms are surprisingly clear and distinguishable. We can even find the individual multipaths. So actually, this happens to validate two observations from previous works. First, uh, the first is that when we do wireless sensing, the observed signals is sparse. They, have, uh, they, they, are, spa they are sparse in components. And the, the other observation is that human body acts like mirrors, and the only part of his body can reflect signals to the receiver. So the, these two observations can both be observed from the enhanced spectrogram. A better way to apply the proposed signal enhancement network is to differentiate the frequency components better. As a, a straightforward example, when two users are co-located in the room and their breath rates are close to each other, this will cause some trouble. Uh, based on the row spectrogram on the left side, it would, would be difficult to underpin their breath curve. We may even mistake it for a single breath pattern. This problem doesn't exist when the signal enhancement network is applied. So in the middle figure, uh, you, can, you can see that our, enhancement, the, our enhanced spectrogram favors Lagrange truth very well. And to, be, uh, to quanti quantitatively speaking, the breath estimation error can decrease by around 70%. And beyond signal enhancement, the proposed network can be used for recognition tasks. Uh, actually, we build three recognition tasks, including gesture, gait, and fault detection with Wi-Fi. And we compare our network with uh, 12 typical models used in Wi-Fi sensing, FMCW sensing, and uh, acoustic sensing, uh, as well as the, some uh, computer vision uh, networks. 
the comparison is performed with multiple metrics in terms of uh, model complexity and the recognition performance. The recognition accuracy and the number of model parameters are reported in this table. So in the left in the table, you can see among all of these models, our network is among is one of the uh, smallest model models. And even in, in this way, the performance uh, of this model is in the first class. So the red figure demonstrates a more intuitive, intuitive comparison. Our network makes a great step towards the designing objective, which is to achieve high performance with less parameters. So here are some takeaways. Uh, in this work, we focus on wireless sensing with Wi-Fi signals, which provides a new sensing modality beyond computer vision. And we tackle the limitations in signal processing technologies with learning methods. And we also we build tailored neural networks required for wireless signals that embrace the unique feature of wireless data. And we, maintain, we also maintain an open data set used for Wi-Fi sensing. It contains data instances regarding RSSI, CSI, and the BVP collected from Wi-Fi NICs. And a total of more than 200,000 gesture samples and the 4,000 human working samples are available in this data set. And please stay, stay tuned for future updates. And to help you getting started with our data site, we also maintain an online tutorial and an archive document. It provides you with some basic knowledge of Wi-Fi sensing, as well as some code, in, code implementations. We wish anyone interested in building Wi-Fi sensing systems could find some useful information in it. So that's all for my presentation. I'm ready to take any questions.